I got a brand new MSI gaming laptop. I'm going to upgrade it. I'll show you how I do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Uh, I'm going to do a video for you here on this brand new MSI GV15 Thin gaming laptop. It's brand new, basically out of the box with Windows 11. Um, the guy wants lots of storage, lots of memory, so I'm going to accommodate him. Um, it's a pretty nice laptop. It's nice and thin. It's kind of middle of the road. It's nothing real fancy. It um, comes with the 11th gen Core i5 11400H. Six core, 12 thread processor. It's got your GTX 1650, four gigs, GDDR6 memory, 256 gig, NVMe SSD, eight gigs of 32 megahertz RAM, uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi 6, Intel, of course and um, a full HD 144 hertz display. Display looks pretty good. Um, over here we got some audio jacks, we got two USB-A, a, a USB-C, Ethernet port, everything on the right hand side. Left hand side pretty straightforward here we just have USB-A and your power cord goes right here and then there's also an HDMI port on the back. They put that all the way back here. Hook up your big 27 inch monitor. Oop, I just put it to sleep. Um, anyway, I'm going to do some upgrading on it uh, and I'm going to do a clone for you. I mentioned this the other day in my video as I was showing you my workload here. So I'm going to try to whap out a video for you. I'm going to put in a brand new <coughs> Samsung SSD 980, one terabyte SSD Gen 3. This will take Gen 3. Uh, you could put a Gen 4 in it, but it's only going to run basically at Gen 3 speeds, maybe a little faster. But it's PCI Express 3.0, not 4.0. And so we're going to go with that. He also, there is a 2.5 inch bay in here. I'm going to put in a Crucial MX500 one terabyte SATA SSD. going to do that as well. And we're going to put in a 32 gigabyte DDR4 kit, two 16 gig sticks of some Crucial 3200. We're going to take out the 8 that's in there. Could just add another 8 if you want of the same speed, but this guy said, ah, let's just put in a matched kit. So that's what I'm going to do for him. Now these do, this model here does come with a little adapter here to accommodate your 2.5 inch SATA drive. That's in, it ships in the box. They give you some mounting screws over here. So um, that was kind of nice of MSI to do that. But I am going to clone the drive that's in here, the 256, under the new uh, SSD here, the, the PCI Express one. I got an adapter here. I like to use these adapters. Got a dongle for USB-A. There's also one for USB-C phone around here somewhere, which is probably what I'm going to use. So uh, these are nice. They're toolless. I'll have a link down below where you can get, get this. You can use any adapter, really, as long as it supports NVMe PCI Express M.2 drive. So I'm just going to plug it in. You don't need a tool, it just clamps down over this little rubber grommet right here if you can see it. Probably not, but it just pops in. So you can also use these for like an enclosure to house a M.2 drive just for an external drive if you want. But they're great for cloning. I got tons of them laying around the shop. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with that. And it comes with a 120 watt power brick here, of course. And let's get, um, let's get into the cloning. All right, guys, I got set up here for cloning. I got a, I switched into dark mode here, so maybe it's going to be a little easier to see. Um, like I said, I'm going to use my little USB adapter I showed you there. I switched over to the USB-C instead of the A, uh, which is over on the right-hand side of the laptop. Let me go ahead and plug that in real quick. And so I got the, oops, get that in the right spot. So I plugged in the, the little dongle over there in the USB-C port. Now we're going to start the cloning. So because it is a Samsung drive, you can use the free Samsung data migration software, which I've already installed. I'll have a link down below. It's easy to get right from their website, but it's completely free. And it only works with Samsung, Samsung drives. So I'm just going to simply double click the icon to launch the program. It's real straightforward, e easy to use program. Now, before you start cloning, there's a couple things you should always check, whether it's a brand new one or one that you have tons of data on. Just um, 
two main things really going with, with Windows 11 or 10 just go into your settings go to privacy and security over here and over here if you have device encryption installed just make sure it's turned off you cannot do a clone with device encryption or BitLocker enabled you have to disable it this one's already disabled <clears throat> so you don't need to worry about it and also I always like to turn off like the power management so it doesn't go into sleep mode or something like that during the clone and don't be connected to the internet when you do a clone you don't want to download and updates or rebooting on you or anything like that while, while you're cloning again if you have a lot of data it's going to take longer than on this one it's probably it should go really really quick because it's just basically a clean windows 11 install and not a lot of other stuff on it <clears throat> so maybe even too if if you are got one that's got a lot of stuff on it just go to your c drive here right click on it just go to properties and go to tools here and run the check here click on check and do a scan on your drive for any errors it might tell you you got a reboot um, to do the scan which is fine just make sure it's cleaned up and not giving you trouble if you got a lot of programs running down here in your systems tray right click on them and hit exit or disable or turn off uh, always a good little thing to do um, but in this case I'm good to go so we have the software launched here very like I said very simple up here it says select a source drive there's our Kingston 256 gig I know that's hard to see because it's 1080p but it's there <laughs> down here on our target drive select drive here's our Samsung SSD 980 right here here's our what we got now here's what we're gonna have when we're done all you do is go down here and click on the start and it's just telling you it's going to shut down when it's all done and so you can open it up and put in your new drive so I'm going to hit OK and we're going to just watch the little percentage meter down here once it starts like I said it should only take probably three four five minutes maybe for a full clone so I'll let that go and I'll be back right at the end All right, guys, I'm back. I just finished cloning. It actually took longer than I thought it would. It took uh, took about 12, 13 minutes. Now we're just gonna click on shut down now. I've had the Samsung data migration software do these in three, four minutes before. But anyway, looks like we got a good clone. Gonna let it shut down. Then we're gonna get into opening it up. And these are a little tricky to get into, so you wanna be really careful. But I'm gonna show you all that. Uh, let's uh, Let's get into opening it up. All right, guys, we finished up the cloning. We're ready to open this thing up. Um, the first thing we're going to do before we try the bottom is on these MSI models, this hinge cover, this plastic piece along the back here, this is, has to be removed. It's a little tricky. you got to be real careful and take your time so you don't break the little clips. Otherwise, it doesn't go back on. It'll fall off and you ruin your day. So let me close it and show you what I mean. <clears throat> It's this piece along the back right here. Kind of goes across right here. You can see it. There's a little seam goes along here. Um, just got to be very gentle. But before I do that, I want to show you that I've taken out all the screws already. They're all right here. They're all the same length. It doesn't matter which one goes back in what hole. Now MSI, they love doing this. They put a factory seal sticker across, usually on one screw. Right here, I removed the factory seal. There's not much you can do about it. You gotta break the seal to get inside. Now these are designed to be upgraded by the user because like I said, you know, they ship they ship them in the box with the mounting bracket and you know they got empty RAM slots in there and you go to their website and read their information on it. They talk about easy upgradability. So if you're real careful, don't damage anything, you should be fine. But if you don't want to break the seal, then don't break the seal, don't don't do it. Anyway, I'm just letting you know that I've done, been doing this long enough to know that those seals, like I said, if you don't break anything, it doesn't really mean anything. You had to ship it back to MSI within that one year warranty period. Um, they're probably going to take care of it as long as, you know, it ain't something you damaged yourself while you were trying to upgrade it. So anyway, like I said, I've taken out all the screws already. So I'm going to flip it back over here and I'm going to grab my little, I like to use these I might boast about these all the time, but these little plastic spudger tools. 
I have a link down below where you can buy a bag of these things. They come in different types and colors. Um, I, I particularly, I just like these ones. They got a nice deep little edge on them here so it doesn't jam in all the way. So what I'm gonna do, so you bear with me, I'm gonna flip it back around here. I'm gonna take my spudger tool. I'm gonna get into this seam area here with it very carefully. I'm gonna be moving around a lot, guys, so bear with me and be careful you know, that screen on the other side of the lid here, don't be squeezing or pushing down on it because you don't want to break your screen. I just want to see if I can get this started. <clears throat> so you can see how I got it. That's just my plastic. Kind of had it started there, but I lost it. All right, let me try that again. This is the hardest part really is getting this trim piece off without busting it. Actually, I'm going to stand it right up here. There, I got. I ran my little spudger down there. You can see how it's opened up the seam here. And it just don't be tugging real hard on it. Once you get it broke loose, just kind of gently jiggle it. And you can see it kind of falls right off. But there's little teeny tiny little clips on here that you don't want to break. If you did, it's not the end of the world because you can always glue it back on, so to speak. But I don't put this back on. I do this very last. Even after I put the bottom back on, I make sure everything works before when I'm satisfied, it's done. I don't have to go back inside. Then I put this back on last just, just to make sure, so to speak. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm going to get that out of the way. And basically, it's a hinge cover. You got your Wi-Fi antennas in here and your LVDS cable in here, so you want to be careful, po you know, poking around in there. You got stuff in there you don't want to break or whatever. So let's flip it back over. And always be careful. Make sure you're protected against static electricity before you go inside your laptop. My bench tops are all anti-static, including my floors. I don't have a problem. So again, I'm going to take my little spudger tool. I'm going to get start right here in the front seam area here, just below the lid. Just tuck it in there and just kind of pop it loose, but don't be tugging and jerking on it just yet. Again, be gentle. Watch your screen. Take your time, I always say. And I'm going to get to the side here. And I pushed it back down with my hand. Once you get it, I'm gonna, there's a little trick on these. got to be careful. Now, like I'm struggling. I'm trying to keep it in the view of the camera here, but forgive me, guys. Can't always do that. All right, down here on, on this end down here where you got all these ports, you got to be careful. You don't want to pull it up. You kind of have to, here, I'll show you. You have to kind of like flex it here a little bit. I got it started over here. We got the back to deal with here. I forgot, sorry. Um, this edge by my good tool here. This area right there's a seam here and we took that hinge cover off it exposes this area here we have to separate that that's separate so let's go ahead I should have probably did that first my bad. So I'm going to get my my tool in here and I'm going to work this up. I'll show you here in a second. Usually not too difficult let me try my spudger. See how that kind of lifts up. You can see that I got it open there like that. When you got an HDMI port back here, you got to be careful of. I just got to get it up. I think I got it up far enough. So these aren't the easiest ones to get into. I have done quite a few MSIs that are designed just like this. I know it looks like I'm struggling here because I am. There we go. But sometimes you, you kind of want to bring it up from the back and this side over here, this side where all these ports are, it, it won't come straight up. You kind of have to like kind of go out this way with it a little bit. You can see then it lifts off quite easily. So that's what the bottom of the cover looks like. Not much to it. Uh, what do we got there? All right, so again, don't touch anything you don't have to. 
The batteries in these aren't screwed in. It's glued in, so you can't just remove the battery. If you're not comfortable getting in there, excuse me, with the battery connected, you can disconnect it right here. This cable slides back. They don't give you a lot of wiggle room here. Uh, usually, I would just do this without disconnecting the battery. Just because all we got to do is take out one screw, put in the new SSD, put a screw back in, a couple of sticks of RAM. Here's our factory 8 gig. Here's an empty slot here. Got a little tiny CMOS battery over here. And they put the Wi Fi under this area right here in the corner. So let me go ahead. I'm going to disconnect that battery just to show you. Usually, if you get your fingers here, your fingernails, you can jiggle it out without too much difficulty. So you can see I got it. <clears throat> Don't put any metal or metallic tools in your computer, please. <laughs> so you can see I got it disconnected here. But if you're gonna go to that, if you're gonna do that, go to that trouble, then you have to kind of gently open it up very gently. And I'm gonna hit the power button a couple times here to discharge any leftover juice floating around in there. Just to make sure, so if you haven't, you know, accidentally dropped a screw or your screwdriver on the main board, you're not going to brick your computer. So let's uh, quickly just, um, here's my crucial 32 gig kit that I'm going to put in there. Going to take out the factory one. Again, you could just put your own 8 gig in there. This is probably going to be like Samsung or something, which it is. You can buy the, these sticks online, but this is what he chose, gave him a choice. So we'll give that back to him. And I'm gonna put, he just wanted a good match set. So we're gonna put in our six or our 32 gigs, two 16s. I think she got a good click there, which I do. Sometimes people watch my videos and say, I, I don't think that went in all the way. And you know, the computer's working fine. And nobody's ever brought one back because the RAM popped out. I'm usually pretty careful about it. I'm not perfect. But there, got a couple of good clicks. It's in there. Now we're just going to remove the SSD here, the Kingston from the factory, 256. Got heat pads under it, thermal pads, which is good. So we'll get rid of that. You can have that back. Got a million of those laying around. Going to take my one terabyte out of my little dongle here. Just like that. Pop it in there. Leave the thermal pads in place. I see they got, and I'll show you in a second. They got a little heat, heat sink, I think, on the bottom of that pan there that lines up with this. If that's the case, I want to see if I have to put a, it's a gaming laptop, so. We don't want that thing getting too hot. Let me just see here. Yeah, I don't have much here actually. <clears throat> Get it right, Dale. Got it wrong way. Sorry. <laughs> now all they got is all they got are some ventilation holes here, right here in the bottom here, right right underneath these ventilation holes is where the SSD is going to be. So. Um, now on the factory, of course, they put the label on. Now these labels do serve as uh, kind of spreads the heat out over the controller and the NAND chips on there. But if here, I'll show you. I might as well do it. it only takes a minute. I got these copper heat sinks and thermal pad that we can put on there. You can buy these little kits online. I'm going to take. I'm going to take this back. Things ice cold. I'm going to take this back out. Carefully lift it back up. I'm gonna leave our thermal pads there. Um, so bear with me while I do this. Didn't think I was gonna have to do this, but a lot of times they'll have like a copper heat sink attached right to the bottom. I know a lot of the Asus Tufts and Acers have that. So what we're gonna do first, got a 0 0.05 mil millimeter thick uh, thermal pad here. We're going to lay across the SSD. Just got to get this protective stuff off. It's always a pain. 
I'll burger it up too bad. <clears throat> but pros and cons on this, sometimes I don't even do this, just depends on the laptop, the configuration, so to speak. Gonna lay that right on there. You don't want to get it down here too far because you know, so it'll plug in properly to the M.2 slot. And we're gonna peel this other layer off here. Can never get a hold of that. Come on. That is gonna be close enough because our screw can go right through it. Now I'm just gonna line this copper heat sink. It's pretty heavy duty, not too thick. Gotta line that up just, just right. Don't wanna get it too close to the connections down there. Kind of about like that. You can see that. And they give you these nifty little bands here that you put on there to hold it on. Once it heats up, that thermal pad will bite hole and it's not going anywhere. But stretching these on isn't always easy. And of course, I missed it the first time. I didn't think I was going to put one of these on there. I thought for sure there'd be some kind of protection under there, but there's not. So... These are hard to, these little bands are hard to stretch. There we go. So I kind of got it on there like that, if you can see it. Okay, and we're gonna put one more on the other end. We're gonna heat protect this thing. There's many schools of thought on doing this on a laptop, putting heat sinks on these SSDs. Like I said, there is going to be some good ventilation there, which is real nice. A lot of them don't even have that. So we got we got the other end in, just like that. So let's put this back in there and be done with that. Sorry it took so long, guys. <clears throat> uh, we still got our battery disconnected, so we're good there. Um, I'll do, I think I already told you the batteries glued in here and over here is our two and a half inch bay for our um, two and a half inch SATA SSD that we're going to pop in there it's kind of cool so over here we're going to pop that back in nice and thick hopefully it's not too thick for that cover to go back on I don't think it will be yeah it should be all right all right get Mr. Mounting Screw here That's what it looks like. Got our one terabyte SSD 980 under there. We got our new RAM in there. Now we're going to go ahead and pop in this one terabyte over here. We want it, and of course, I don't have a knife close by. Ugh. Usually have one laying here. Right there, guys. Brand new. twiddle thumbs today. So the drive is going to basically mount in here just like that. So I'm going to take our nifty little bracket here. It's pretty straightforward. It's going to sit down in there just like just like that. So this is going to mount like that. And they were kind enough to give us some mounting screws for that. They said they send you the parts to upgrade it, but they put a seal on it. And you're wondering like, hmm, what do I do? If you're careful, or if you've done it before, just do it. But again, if you're not comfortable, take it to a professional, have them do it. Or don't do it at all. 
but I've been doing this long enough to not fry too many computers. I don't fry any computers. But any upgrades like this we do here in the shop, we stand behind it right here. So if there's ever a problem, they don't call MSI or whoever it is, they, they come here and we take care of it. It's that simple. So now we're gonna pop this in to the slot. So everything lines up right. Just like that, it slid right in, holes line up nicely. <clears throat> now put the two little black screws they gave us to hold that in place. Uh, just haven't had time to do video guy videos, guys. I'm sorry about that. Um, wish I could do a video every single day, but I just don't have time. I take care of my customers. All right, one terabyte SATA SSD, one terabyte NVMe SSD, 32 gigs of DDR4. We have to plug the battery back in carefully. Once you plug that in, be super careful. And these usually go in without too much trouble. I'm moving around where I can get my fingers on it. Boom, we got power going to the board now, okay? Like I said, I'm not going to put that trim piece back on the back until I know everything's kosher or good, so to speak. I'm just going to get this kind of in place enough so I can turn it back on and see if our clone went good. These things don't want to line up right. Pain. Got to go that way. But you have to kind of get this end in first down here where all these ports are carefully. Get that, you can hear how it kind of snapped and fell into place. I'm not putting, like I said, I won't put screws in just yet. You can see our copper heat sink there right underneath the ventilation holes, which I guess is good. We'll button that piece back up later. You know, I did that whole clone running on battery power. Typically, I would tell you to plug in your AC adapter, but you know, it just depends on how long the clone's gonna take. So yeah, if you're gonna clone, plug in your AC adapter, don't do it on the battery like I did. So let's just go ahead and hit the... That power switch is right by where there's a screw, and when you have the bottom, um, the screws out, and you open this, it kind of flexes, and that doesn't, you just have to push it really, really hard when you don't have the screws sucking it together i forgot about that and these that's kind of a kind of a goofy power switch not my favorite but you can see we got a post Let's see what happens here boom there's our data migration software uh, when you're all said and done you can of course you can go and uninstall that <clears throat> i'm not sure why it's telling me that let me see here hopefully it didn't do what i think it might have done it shouldn't have Not sure why it was telling me that. Well, we certainly don't have low space. We have, oh, you can't see that. Excuse me, guys. I'm trying to get this so you can see what's going on here. <clears throat> There's our one terabyte SSD. I just had a little warning pop up there. It said low SSD space. I'm not sure what that was all about. Hmm, it's gone now. Interesting. We still have the one terabyte SATA SSD we have to initialize. So I'm just gonna go to the start button right here on the bottom. I'm gonna right, right click on it. And go to disk management. And you can see it popped right up here. I'm gonna hit okay. Let me make this a little bigger here. Here's our one terabyte unallocated space. That's our SATA SSD. Just right click and do new, new simple volume. Hit next. If you wanna make partitions on it, you can certainly do that. Now would be the time to do it before you start putting stuff on there. Hit next. Default drive letter D. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. For the volume, you can do this later if you want, but I'll just call it HDD. Or not HDD, sorry. Um, SSD. Uh, key, it's small keyboard. There's no number pad, plus I'm sideways, so bear with me here. Um, 
I'm just typing anything in here. SSD storage, how's that? And then hit finish, it'll do a quick format, boom. Popped right up and see here's what's going on here. So we got a terabyte over here with our Windows install with lots of free space, our one terabyte SATA SSD, all is good there. Um, close that out and let's just open up, right click again and start, go to task manager. Click on the performance tab at the top here. <clears throat> and you can see now we got 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz of DDR4 memory. This is all good. And there's our 11th gen i5 11400, 6 core CPU. So overall, that was a nice quick little upgrade. I'm going to put that trim piece back on there. Actually, let me shut it down and kind of show, give you a little tip on that. This thing's going to be, be a nice little entry-level gaming system. Let's wait for it to shut off real quick. And boom, it's off. So carefully closing. See how it flexes a lot back here in the corner when it's unscrewed. But this, um, I'm going to snap this back here in. He's going kind of hard. Again, don't squeeze on that lid too hard, please. That would ruin your day if you broke your screen. We just want to make sure it's down flush basically right here, which it appears to be. Now when you put this trim piece back in, the thing to do is it goes in. It's kind of hard to do here. Only goes one way because it's got that cutout on it there. It's going to go in here like this. But you're going to put this back edge here. It's going to kind of go down and in and then snap down like that, if that makes any sense. But it only, it only fits in there one way. You just got to be careful and be gentle. There, it snapped right back in. You heard it click in there, but it kind of goes, like I said, kind of in at a slight angle. You can see there's those little tabs on the edge. You have to go in the little notches, then snap it down. Try to snap this down. Without doing that, you're going to booger it all up. So there, I'll get all the screws back in it, button it up. Got a nice little upgrade to an MSI GB15 thin laptop. Guys, I appreciate you watching. That's all I got on this one. Uh, check out more of my videos. Give me a like and a subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Have a super day.